a welcome to everyone that's come today. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, say the Lord. These pastors just go forward. Shall burn them up, say the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That's the day we are in. Someone said the day cometh. We are, we are at the last day. We are at the last moment. We are at the time the Lord is going to show up in his judgments. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, do I have the right people now? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where we are. We're in the very, very last days. I was listening to Ben Hill the other day. He said, fact, it's the last moment. It's no longer days no longer days, it's the last moment, that's where we are now, that's where we are now, you know he was saying something in 1946 when God gathered the Israelites back, and there were only 30 Jews that were Christians in all of Israel, 30, 30, but as we speak, there are over 30,000 Jews that have been saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And over 1 million Jews out of the 6 million Jews have heard the gospel. And the gospel is going around Jerusalem. They say it was not like before when it was foreigners that were preaching the gospel and Jews were opposing them. They said now Jewish believers are now going back to Jerusalem to win their own brethren. So I'll say we're in the last days. And he said to them, he said to the apostles, he said, when they chase you from one village, go to another. He said, you don't go through all the villages till I come back. He's on his way back. Because everything is rounding off. I hear what I'm saying. We are in the afterwards of the afterwards. We are in the last of the last days. We are in the last moments. Those things you read in the Bible, those prophecies were in those days. Tell your neighbor were in those days. You know, you read Joel 22, verse 28. It shall come to pass after what I will pour out my spirit. This is the time. That's where we are now. That's where we are. That's where we are. You say, Pastor, it's not looking like it. Yeah. Because there are two forces moving in the last days. The force of evil and the force of what? The devil will do everything to mess up things. But it's our job to bring the glory and restore things. And everybody said amen. amen. It's just like Egypt. You know two forces were moving that night? The spirit of death and the spirit of life. Same night. Same night. It depends on which one you wanted to invite. Two spirits were moving. But it was you that determined what you will experience. Those that put the blood over their dog experience the spirit of life. He shielded them. Those that ignored the blood, ignored Jesus, refused to make him their Lord and Savior, ignored consecration, kept living dirty and filthy lives. The spirit of the dead came in there and wiped out their first one. So when the last days, brother, will you determine what you experience? I hear what I'm saying. And we are called to get the whole world to experience God's presence and God's glory. He said, you shall come to pass out all my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. We are in those days when all of us should be what prophesying. Your young men shall see vision. We are in those days now where every person should be seeing visions, having divine encounters, not just for prophets. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even those you think have retired will begin to catch new dreams, new ideas. We'll begin to come out of retirement. That's where we are now. So even on your men servants and your maid servants are upon my sleep. The days we are living now, there will be no more sexual discrimination between men or women. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is going to use us. And let me tell you, anytime you break that barrier, God shows up. In Acts chapter 1, before the day of Pentecost came, the Bible said they were gathered in one accord with the women. And the Spirit came. Ah, you hear what I'm saying? So churches that are still segregating between male and female, yeah, who 
old school, far back. You don't understand divine technology. Dominion was not given to Adam. Dominion was given to both. When God may say, let them. Someone say, let them. Uh, someone say, let them. Someone say, let them. You don't say, let him have dominion. Say, let them have what? We will never have dominion until we experience unity, until we experience synergy, until we break boundaries and forget all our quarreling, until we begin to walk in love with one another. We will never experience unity, synergy, and it's that unity and synergy that brings down the glory of God, that gives the church dominion. These are no longer the days of my church or your church or denomination. No. This is the time of the body of Christ. Someone say the body of Christ. One body. One Messiah. One body. He said that day will come and will bond them to leave them that root to our branch. It's a destructive day. So there's going to be a lot of destruction in the world. It's not going to get better out there. Economies will tumble. A lot of things will go wrong. But that's not your faith. Let me show your faith. Your faith is in verse 2. Can we read it together? But unto you that what fear my name shall what the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Someone shout amen. amen. So while people are experiencing destruction, you'll be experiencing restoration. If you believe me, shout a living amen. amen. While people are experiencing sickness, plagues, Corona, all kinds of things, you'll be experiencing healing. Someone shout amen. amen. So in these last days, we're going to experience unusual waves of healing. Someone say waves of healing. Amen. Because someone is what is bringing the healing? Say the son of righteousness. Someone say the son of righteousness. So it's no longer the man of righteousness just coming to lay hands on one person. When the sun shines, it shines on everybody. I hear what I'm saying. We're talking about a piscazo, an atmosphere of the glory of God. If you believe me, shout a living amen. amen. When you get into the perimeter of a crusade, the perimeter of a service, you get healed. When you put on a radio program, put on something, just because you hear the voice and connect to the atmosphere, you get healed. That's where we are now. The sun of righteousness. God's sun is about to rise over the world. Hallelujah. And it's carrying healing in his wings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In these days, we're going to begin to experience healing in the atmosphere. No more one man. That's not the name man of God. Yeah, I don't know the people I should have. Forget those things. Those days are gone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are now here to experience God. So say experience God. When the sun shines, does it shine on everybody? Does everybody see it? Does everybody feel the heat? That's where we are now. Not when they must touch you. Nobody needs to touch you now. You just need to be in the place. So these are not the days to joke with services. These are not the days to joke with meetings. Because in these last days, God will be overshadowing meetings. Someone say overshadowing meetings. Uh, he will be rising upon meetings, shining down upon meetings, pouring down blessings, pouring down glory, pouring down healing as we worship, as we pray. As we spend time. So, but for you that fear his name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And what will be the result? He said, and what? And you shall go forth. Somebody's going to go forth now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody tied down, you are being let go in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are being set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever was limiting is being broken down in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, they shall go forth and they shall grow as cows out of the stall. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know the Bible says in, in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 that in that day the body shall be lifted from their shoulders and the yoke from their neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of what? The anointing. There are levels in that revelation. Of course, one level is that the anointing oil will come upon you and the yoke will break. It gets soft and break. Another level is that the, the, the yoke will dematerialize. For some dimension of the Hebrew, that's what it means. Just like iron rust to rust away. I, I don't know what is upon you. I said to rust away. Amen. You won't even find the pieces to organize it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. But I want to bring another dimension of the revelation, and it's in the deeper Hebrew. 
He said the yoke will no longer be able to fit around your neck because you are growing too fat. Because of fatness. So the anointing, the oil you there in the Hebrew is fatness. You have grown fat. When you wear a cloth that you have overgrown, what happened to the cloth? And when you take, are you assembling it again? Yes, sir. See, calls it broken bottle, no mechanism. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, when the day is that the yoke will be able to, the yoke of sickness will be just playing around you. Today it will break, tomorrow it will reassemble. Next morning it will break, next morning it will assemble. When the days you are going to have dominion over sickness, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. The revelation of divine health will be so deep, sickness cannot assemble itself around you. The revelation of divine blessings will be so heavy, poverty cannot arrange itself around. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, that yoke is breaking now. I'm going fast with revelation, with truth. So the yoke cannot fix you because you have grown what? Too fast. Not this one will pray for you today, you get healed. Tomorrow you get sick again. We pray again, no. The Bible says, in that day, nobody in that land will say, I am sick. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Look at levels of revelation. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. He said, I will take sickness from the midst of you. There are levels. One is that you have the sickness, you will come and take it out. The first level is a medical problem. You will fix it. The second level is that you can cut out things. Lumps and growth, you can take it out. Powerful. But let me take you to the higher level. You see, I will take sickness from the midst of you. That means in your family, you cannot find sickness. The other one, in your church, you cannot find sickness. Midst of you, around you. The other one, in your community. Do you know, there were cities where there were no sick people. In Zion, Illinois. When Alexander, John Alexander, that word, there was a cloud of glory over there. Nobody falls sick. If you enter that city, you'll be well. Finish that, that one takes annotated concordance. He was awake for 1,000 hours. The guy did not sleep till he that under the glory note. They called him the man with the red eye. He never slept till he finished that takes annotated Bible because there was a glory. The glory is being restored to the church again. Amen. I said the glory is being restored to the church again. Amen. But let me give you a higher dimension. You know the higher dimension? You are now the one carrying the glory. Wow. Wherever you show up, sickness will disappear from your perimeter. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his way. Those of you that want to write title, I'm talking about the overshadowing glory. The overshadowing presence. That was what Jesus was talking about. That's what Malachi was saying. So when you see when sun rises, darkness flees. There's something, there's ministry by the anointing, one on one, two by two, five. But when the glory, when the presence of God overshadows the meeting, multitudes are healed instantly. And when that glory stays, nobody can be seen. I said, we're getting there in the name of Jesus. Amen. As long as all the powers of the kingdom to God, we're getting there. A man entered, Dr. Charles in before, entered a hospital ward, and over 100 patients were healed instantly. They shut down the ward, not in America, at least in Nigeria, and he said, Over 100 patients, instantly. So I'll say the glory. So I'll say the glory. Glory. Tell me what the glory is here. Glory is here. That's the season we are. You know, Malachi was the old, end of the Old Testament. And if you look at Malachi, the prophecies about Malachi are the last day's prophecy. So the soul of righteousness will rise with what? And when there's healing in his wings, everywhere where that light falls, sickness will disappear. That's going to be our experience starting tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, and you shall tread down the wicked, for there shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. From today, everything oppressing you will be under your oppression. Amen. I say everything oppressing will be under your oppression. Amen. 
Because not only will you be set free, you'll begin to walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. He said, in the day that I do this, say the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. We are in these days prophesied by Malachi. The days of the overshadowing presence. The days of God's visitation and God's habitation. Whenever Jesus brings visits the people, he carries healing in his wings. That's what all of the things, you know, you can come to church and have a service and Jesus did not come. But anytime you succeed in bringing him in, oh, there will be healing in that service. I, I hear what I'm saying. Yes, That's why he's going to say the son of righteousness. He's talking about Jesus. He will rise with healing in his wings. Anytime. <coughs> so, <coughs> don't look at a man. Target to bring Jesus. Someone said, target to bring Jesus. Whether it's in your house, whether it's in your home, I get to bring him in. Bring him into your home. Bring him in. in. How do you bring him? By his spirit, by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Always target. Music ministers don't sing to please people. Sing to invite Jesus. Intercession, don't pray to feel good. Pray to invite Jesus. I, I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Even preachers, don't preach to be a wonderful preacher. Preach to invite Jesus. When he comes, he will bring healing, he will bring deliverance, he will bring blessing. If you believe it, shout a living amen. amen. When he overshadows a meeting by his spirit, his presence will always bring healing. Oh, there have been meetings like that. Or Robert was known for laying hands on people. In his lifetime, he had laid hands to over 500,000 people. I recently found out that he even had to have surgery. On his shoulders because of that. But there was one meeting he had, one meeting. In that particular meeting, while he was ministering, the wind entered the tent and blew through the tent. Of course, knocked everybody out. By the time the wind left, everybody it was 1952. Everybody in the meeting was healed. Everybody. They started gathering crutches, gathering glasses, nobody touched them. That's what happens when God comes. You must learn to bring God again. Tell your neighbor, you must learn to bring God. Bring Him into your closet. You don't need anybody to lay hands on you sometimes. You just need to welcome God. Just entertain Him. Just spend time with Him. When you are through, you just find out that your sickness is gone. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is what? Fullness of joy. At his right hands, there are what? Pleasures forever. Whenever he comes, anything that is unpleasurable leaves. I see you living your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Someone will say, why? Why is it that when he comes, healing comes? Exodus 15, 26 says it very clearly. He said that, and the Lord your healer. So when the, the healer comes, you get healed. True or false? True or false? You get healed. When he comes, he does what he says. Exodus 23, 25 and 26, he said, I will take sickness from the midst of you. That means whenever he comes, he takes sickness out of people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why whenever he calls by his spirit, whenever he, his presence shows up, healing happens without anybody laying hands on anybody, without anybody saying anything. Because he said, I will take what? Sickness away from the midst of you. Why do people get healed when the presence of God shows up? It happens because the man that we're talking about is the one that paid the price for you to be healed. So whenever he shows up, he distributes what he has paid for. I hear what I'm saying. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 said, Surely he has borne our grief. He carried our sicknesses. He carried our weaknesses. He carried our distress. He carried our pains. He carried our sorrows. That's the one that is coming. Anytime he shows up, he does what he had done before on the cross. He carries all those sicknesses and throws them away. Because the word carry them means to carry and to throw away. No matter what you are having, whether it's cancer, HIV, when you invite God into your life, if you're not saved, if you ask Him to come into your life, be your Lord and Savior, when He comes, His sickness will disappear. 
pastor had a meeting and the Muslim woman had this thing that if she asked Jesus to come into her life, Jesus is a healer. She had HIV AIDS. Once she said, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior. As he came in instantly, she was healed. She went to the lab and she was totally free. So I shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell her, when he comes, he brings healing. Say it again, when he comes, he brings healing. Say it again, when he comes, he brings healing. If you believe you are receiving your own shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And when it comes, sickness, sin cannot be a hindrance. Because in verse 5, he said he was wounded for our transgression. Even if it's your personal sin that comes from he has already paid the price for you to be free. He was bruised for iniquity. Even if it's your family sin that caused the problem that you're running, and maybe it's that sickness you're running your family. He has already paid the price. So no more limits. Tell your neighbor, no more limits. No more boundaries. No more limitation. He said the punishment for our peace was placed on him. Even if it was because of the sin of Adam or it was a demonic oppression when he shows up, that yoke is broken. That body is lifted. Whether it is something that is malformed, when he shows up, restoration happens. Someone say amen. amen. He said the punishment for our peace, the word peace is wholeness, was placed on him. So when the one that has paid the price shows up, <laughs> what he pays for manifest. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And by his stripes, by his wounds, by the blood that was shed, we are healed. The one we are talking about is the one that was bruised for you. It's the one that was flogged for you. It's the one that his back was torn for you. The Bible says, because of his stripes, we are what? We are healed. A man can be guessing about healing, but not the one that paid the price. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I can be doing trial and error with anointing what? No. When the one that pays the price shows up, he's always coming in. So I say, Lord Jesus, I receive from your bleeding sides. I receive my healing. I remember one time I was having severe back pains. I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, your back was broken. And as I meditated on the cross, as they tore his back, and the back was broken, the Bible said that they cut furrows in my back. The pain left immediately. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he has paid the price. He paid the price. I could not pay. I owe the debt. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Sin is dealt with. Sickness has no power. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whenever sin is what? They are to it. Sickness has what? No power. So whatever opened the door for that sickness, Jesus has paid the price. Whether it's your personal sin, that's what we're talking about transgressions. Whether it's your family sin, maybe somebody did something in the family and opened the whole family to that. The price has been paid. Tell anybody the price has been paid. Or whether maybe you don't even know what happened and it came upon you because Adam sinned and opened the whole world. Today, if you will accept Jesus as your Lord, that price that was paid will become yours in the name of Jesus. And that look of sin and sickness will be broken in your life in the name of Jesus. You know, there's a lot of people with all kinds of challenges, deformities, abnormalities. All those things are afflictions. All say afflictions. Satanic affliction. Sometimes some people it happens in the womb, they don't know it's there. So it happens after they've come out of the womb. But I have good news for you. Jesus paid the price so that you can be free from every affliction. And one of the things I see that he does when he comes by his presence, one of the greatest things I've seen over the years that there are creative miracles. So I'll say creative miracles. So I'll say creative miracles. Whenever he shows up in his presence, they are what? Creative miracles. Job chapter. Job chapter. 34. 33 verse 4. Job 33 verse 4. He said, The Spirit of God has formed me, and the bread of God has what? Given me life. Anytime the Spirit of Jesus moves, every time the Holy Spirit moves in a meeting, one of the things he does is to create things that don't exist. I hear what I'm saying. That's why I say the Spirit of the Lord has what? Has formed you. So if you have something that needs to be created, it will be created for you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Eyes that are missing, ears that are missing. Then second, he said, the bread of God has given me life. If you have something that has been damaged that needs to be restored, the Holy Spirit, as he moves over you, he will restore it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember I was going for a meeting, I think it was in Transikudu. And I finished reading this scripture, and the Lord said to me, I'm going to straighten crooked things. He said, I'm going to show up by my spirit. So just create room for me. And I made sure I made the room. A lady came there, she had one hand that was crooked. She had had an accident, it had broken, but it healed wrongly. In that meeting, that hand straightened out and became normal. <laughs> I remember a meeting we had with Dr. Val. It was, uh, was it Pastor Mass Church? Was that church again? It don't remember. There was a boy that was born with the nose blocked from bed. He breathed through the mouth. So there might be some of you that have some abnormalities you are born with. Today is your night. Amen. I said, Tonight is your night. Oh. Amen. So the sister said they were preparing for surgery, but somehow they came to that meeting. The video is so, the video is so funny. The presence of God was so strong that Dr. Ma looked at me and asked, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Before he could say Jack, I laid my hands on the boy, he went under the power and slept under the spirit, under the presence. Constructed his nose, you know, because one thing when he talks about the presence of God, eh? one of the things you'll find in the presence of God are the angels of God. You know, when you do it, there's what they call train. God's train is his angels. When they said he came and his glory filled the temple, the word glory is talking about many things. One of the I've talked it before about seven dimensions of the glory. One of the, the dimensions, the manifest presence, the power of God, the wealth of God. But one dimension is the angels. Because God is a king. Whenever he comes, he doesn't come alone. I would say that the crowd, multitude is the glory of a king. The lack of it is the destruction of a prince. Oh, God is a king. So I believe one or two angels just went and operated on the boy. 
the guy was there under an anesthesia. We did the service, we are busy ministering to people, but the presence was so deep. By the time he came up, his mouth was closed. They were looking around, dazed. People observed. Hey, his mouth is closed. That mouth has never been closed since bed. He only breathes through the mouth. The mouth was closed and the nose was open. <laughs> Tell your people when he comes, there's healing in his wings. The nose was open. The whole Nassau track, they reconstructed it. The Bible says that. I, I, I always quote that scripture, but I, I think we need to read it because I, I, I think this way all around. <laughs> Uh, uh, Nahum chapter 1 verse 5 Nahum chapter 1 verse 5 I hope you guys can get it Nahum chapter 1 verse 5 Look at this The mountains wake at him And the hills what? Melt And the earth is what? Born at his presence Yeah, the world and all that world well, I don't know what is inside you, or maybe they say it's infection. I say to be born in his presence. Amen. I say to be born in his presence. Amen. You know, so can, this was the word I heard. The fire of the Holy Ghost is cleansing people. One guy fell under the power, and fire was born. And when he came up, he said he had sexually transmitted infection. He was born in the presence of God. He came up totally free. I don't know what is in your body, it will be born off. Amen. I say to be born off. I don't know what the mouth is with, it will quake. The Bible said that mountains skip like lambs in his presence. That means once he shows up, they jump out. <laughs> if you have a breast lump today, it will jump out. <laughs> if you have fibroid, it will jump out. Amen. If you have hernia, it will jump in. <laughs> because what is hernia? Hernia is part of your intestine that's coming out. So you push it back inside and see the top. When it meets yesterday in Albany Road, there was a guy who had hernia. They had done surgery on one side, the other side opened up. But in that meeting, the thing jumped back inside and they sealed it up. <laughs> but it's a mountain smelt in his presence. It's a mountain skip like rounds. You say, when the presence of God shows up, Pastor Lambi, I don't need to do any amounts. Just to say the word. Just like when you fill a house with gas, all you need to do is light a match. It explodes. And you hear what I'm saying? That's why sometimes don't stress yourself. Just wash and bring him in. When you say one word, just pray in tongues. Fill the place with the presence. Just bring in his presence. How do you bring it in? By spending time in prayer. As you pray in tongues, His presence will come. He will come into that place. His presence will fill the whole place. Spend time in worship. As you worship, He comes. As you worship, even the rivers of living water side will flow out. Is somebody with me now? Whatever mountain you came with is melting in his presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, in thy presence. You see, you have shown me the path of life, Psalm 16. You have shown me the path of life, 16 verse 11. For in thy presence is what? Fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. What does it mean when you come into the presence of God? Anything that cuts short your joy is what cuts short. Whether it's a sickness, is a disease, is a problem, is a man. Someone say it's cut short. Someone say it's cut short. Anything that steals your joy, whenever you get into the presence of God, is taken away. And he said, at your right hand there are what pleasures forevermore. What does it mean? Mahesham that wrote a book was talking about the Holy Spirit and he said his, his wife, his wife's father is a king he's a king in Asia 
the Indian king. That that scripture, he understands the scripture very well. See, because the man sits on the throne and normally beside both sides, especially at his right hand, is a bowl of rupees. Rupees. So he said, when you're coming to the man's presence, and you praise, you know that they talk to kings. I I had a car with an offer one time. I understood God. An offer. One of the offers in Abuja, they came. There was an offer, and the number of Lagos was sick then. You know, they brought him to the hospital in Abuja, and I was going. But so they just stopped me, and they said, Ah, our offer is still wanted. I said, I'm going now. I said, Please. And once I looked, I saw his offer. My going ended. I don't know. You no, know, I just found out that many of people don't respect their rulers. We talk to you guys, did, but we don't. Because many people are normal. I left the video and followed them. Took them round till they admitted them in the, you know, the special units. But in the process, I think when we were going to pay or something, the man took me in his car. You know what they were playing in the car? Music. Praising him. <laughs> Music praising him. So no, they were, they were talking. Singing song. Praising him. <laughs> praising the other. Calling his name. This is what God loves. God is a king. Are you aware? The Bible says in his presence there is what? Sweetness of joy. When you come in, they don't squeeze your face. Straighten it. When you come there, don't squeeze your face. Dance. When you come there, bring him joy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Then he will put his hands at the right side and do what? Release you. That's what the father used to do. When you come in with a, a song or a dance, praising him, or you come with a gift, because you don't enter. Don't come and see Omar Nova with nothing. Eh? He will put his hands. Do you know what is? Do you know what is gems? Do you know emeralds, all kinds of jewels, stones. One of them can settle you. The man will just take it and pray. That's what it means that in the presence of God is what fullness of joy, and at His right hand what? When you come into the house of God, forget your problems. Forget whether you ate or not, you are in the presence of a king. Someone say you are in the presence of a king. Of One king. thing that he releases can solve all your problems. Yes, sir. One idea. One option. One answer to prayer. In his presence. Say, thou will show me the path of life. So see the way to life. This is the way to more life. The one who grow in grace, this is the way. In thy presence there is what? Fullness of joy. Coming with joy. And as you come in with joy, he will fill you with more joy. And everything cutting short your joy will be what? Removed. Melted away. And at his right hand, there are what? Pleasures forevermore. Part of that pleasure is healing. Part of that pleasure is deliverance. Part of that pleasure is breakthrough. Part of that pleasure is husband. Part of that pleasure is wife. Part of that pleasure is exam success. You know, in campus those days, when I have exams, the day before people don't come to church before they have exams. That's the day I come. Even if I was not planning, I would come that day and dance like a mad person. Lie down, roll, roll, roll. Then, exam is settled. Because it's also in his presence. There is fullness of joy. And his right hand, someone said, at his right hand. There is everlasting one. You know, this is a we've been sowing and sacrificing. The Bible says it is with joy that you draw from the wells of salvation. Joy is the key to the harvest. There's a scripture pastor shared. I don't know whether we can find it. Oh, time, 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 time. I think it's Jeremiah 33. Is it Jeremiah 33? Oh, Jeremiah 33. So call it. Someone just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues a bit. Just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. And it's of gravity now. Pray in tongues, just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues, just pray in tongues. 
And man was saying, how can this be? It is impossible. Seeing that I know not a man. The, Holy Spirit, the, the angel said, I know it is impossible, but there's a way impossible things can be done. He said, can we read it together? And the angel said, can we read it together? One, two, go. The Holy Ghost. Someone said the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. That's what we are reading in Malachi. The Son of Righteous shall rise. That means it shall overshadow you, shall come upon you. And the power of what? The highest shall what? Overshadow you. The word overshadow means wrap you in atmosphere of miracles. And therefore that holy thing that shall be born shall be called the Son of God. It will not be the Son of Man. It will not be the product of a man. The word Son means child. The word Son means product. That breakthrough. We come from God. I say there's a breakthrough that is coming your way that man cannot explain. I say there's a healing that man cannot explain. I say there's a deliverance that man cannot give. That's coming to you in this season in the name of Jesus. So you must take time daily to create this atmosphere in praise, in prayer, in worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that God can do what He can do. That's what some people call the atmosphere of miracles. It is also the atmosphere of faith. It's also the atmosphere of possibilities. In that atmosphere, anything is possible. Tell your neighbor, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So no more in your prayer time, spend time praising God. Oh, that's one song I've been singing every morning now. That's an ambassador. Holy Spirit, I me go. And when that atmosphere wrapped Mary, it cannot be explained medically, but there was a baby in her womb. Had the baby entered, no man knew, but there was what? Baby. I said, so what God is going to do to you, nobody will be able to explain it. Amen. I said, nobody will be able to explain it. Amen. And because she laid out on a woman that doesn't have eyeballs, just have holes. That she just saw something started growing, like a little seed. And it was an eye. It was growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it filled the eye. How can I go? Miracle senseless. If it is a miracle, you cannot explain it. If you can explain it, it's not a miracle. It's not. So if you have something that is, doesn't make sense, that needs to be addressed, that's God's job. Tell, tell anyone that's God's job. In Acts chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, this same presence brought mass healing. It was on a man. So it can be on a man. That man was Peter. He was carrying it wherever he went. Acts chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. It's in as much as they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might what? Overshadow them. So you, you, how can somebody shadow overshadow people? How can somebody shadow overshadow people? It's not your shadow. How can this shadow climb you? No, it was not a physical shadow. There was a presence that I was carrying. There was an atmosphere. So I say atmosphere. The word in the Greek is the word episkiazo. It, it means to wrap someone in light. He was wrapped in light. The Bible says God is light and in him there is no one, no darkness. Light is his clothes. That's what Peter was carrying. He was carrying light. He was carrying an atmosphere. And whenever he crossed any group of people, his sicknesses disappeared. Or the said, this thing happened to him in Greece. That they lined up ambulances on the road to the stadium. As his car drove past. Whether you were sick or dead, you are coming out. So Someone said, Episcazo. He said he came to that place, they refused to give him his stage or nothing. He entered fasting seven days by the seventh day. Something came. That's another key to it. The Bible says, Why Jesus prayed on the Mount of Transfiguration? He changed. The way to change things is for you to change. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? Yes, you are going somewhere that's speaking. You need to change. Tell everybody you need to change. I've been speaking too much English. 
you need to transfigure. When the man changed, when the glory of God came on him, as he drove to, when he hit the stadium, so many people were healed. They gathered people from everywhere and lined them on the streets. He didn't come out, he, didn't come. he just drove past. Drive through miracles. I said, God is going to use some of you for crazy things in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Look at it. Then they came a multitude. So it started happening. They went and gathered more people out of the cities. So these are thousands from cities round about Jerusalem, all the cities, bringing sick folks. And then that were vexed with what? Unclean spirits. There's what is called area deliverance. And they were healed. Can we read the last slide? Every one of them. Personally, the key to complete healing is not laying hands. The key to complete healing is the atmosphere. Is the presence of God. Is the manifestation of the glory. Is the glory red. When God shows up, there's no limits. He said, everyone. Someone say, every one of them. Someone say, every one of them. Not under this group, but they say those that were vexed with unclean spirits, demon possessed people, those that were sick. When the present shows, there's no boundary. You know, the limit is in our mind. When you are doing the healing, you limit God. When God shows up, there's no limit. So why are we wasting our time? Let's learn to make room for God. Tell your neighbor, make room for God. Bishop Patrick Kind that said, make room for the Holy Ghost for him to move. Make room for him in your prayer time. Make room for some of us who are so organized, you have organized God out of your life. Make room for him in your worship time. Your worship must not be 13 seconds. Why don't you just make it timeless? One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Just allow God to move. I'm looking forward when we should give some timeless meetings. I, I hear what I'm saying. So that God can do some crazy things. If you believe it, shout a living amen. amen. Tell me, but make room for the Holy Ghost. When it shows, everything will be taken away. What's the, pre- the, the, the process that best is over? John 7, 37, as I wrap up. He said, if anyone is thirsty, you should come and drink. When you drink better food, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. So learn to drink to stupor. Psalm 107, verse 9. Learn to drink to stupor. Spend time with God. When you spend time with God, He will overshadow you. Learn to spend time to pray. Pump the waters you have received. Number three, learn to overflow with the glory. Don't just limit God. Allow God to move. Allow God to use you. Allow God to walk with you. Allow God to walk without you. Number four, learn to swim in the unpassable river. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 5, they were talking about levels of the anointing. There was ankle deep. There was no go deeper. When you pray and you start feeling the anointing, don't stop. Go deeper. Someone say go deeper. When you worship and you are shaking, don't stop. Don't be afraid. Someone say go deeper. Because the first step may be ankle. Go to knee. From knee. Go to waist. From waist. Don't stop. Go to the river which no man can walk. We must never be afraid to go deeper in God. I saw a vision and, and some time ago, some week, months ago, and I don't know what the Spirit of God fell on a meeting. The glory of God of us were on our face. I think it was Kesar that was leaving. Everybody was on their face. And halfway to the meeting, I started writing announcements for Sunday service. Glory everywhere. I'm lying down though. I didn't announce it because I need you so I can announce it. And while I was doing that, I think somebody, this door opened. And I don't know whether it's a personality, whether demon, I don't know. Something came, but it just the service. And the Lord said to me, one of the greatest opposition to the move of God is administration. You want order. Order. There's order that brings God, but there's order that chases him out. Everything just comes. Most of us are trying to please people. We displease God. I was close by this time. It's good, but sometimes it's not good. You must see this in this man. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes there are meetings that should not close with the grace. Just close. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yes, 
just close. Anytime the person recovers from where he is, he can close his own. We must, as a church now, you know, because, you know, we talk about evening in glory, and we must begin to get to that point where we can allow God to move. Even in your prayer time, come through. Say my neighbor, pray through. Tell anybody, pray through more. Sometimes you see your schedules. Some of you organize every second and organize God out. Pray through for God to move. You see him move in the mighty way, and everybody say amen. amen. Stand on your feet, we need to go. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, as we close. The Bible says, First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. First Corinthians, we're not first someone. No. First Corinthians 3, verse 17. I think it should be second. The Spirit is the Lord, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, yeah, yes, now the Lord is that Spirit. So, what we're talking about the Spirit of Jesus, who is he talking about the Holy Spirit? Someone say the Holy Spirit. Is that what he said? Now the Lord is what? Is that Spirit. Jesus is not here in the flesh, he's here by his Spirit. Someone say the Lord is that Spirit. Tell them, but that's the Holy Ghost is who we are talking about. Oh. Tell them, but the Holy Spirit is who we are talking about. Oh. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? By the way, come to the presence of God. Throw away your the call. That's like a grace person. Worship without boundaries. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Freedom where he is. Forget your neighbor, forget your problems. And when you forget that, it gives you the other dimension of the freedom. There is liberty. That means in the presence of the Lord, books are broken. Give me another translation. Books are broken. Bodies are lifted. I don't know what is your problem now. But today, God is going to dissolve it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just lift up your hands and welcome the Lord. Just welcome him. Say, Lord, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just open your hearts. If you've sinned against you, one of the things that drives God away is sin. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to cleanse you. Ask Him to cleanse you by His blood. Ask Him to forgive you. The Bible says, God is of a holier eye than to behold iniquity. If there's something that can chase away the presence of God, if there's something that will make God not to show up, is sin. So begin to talk to Him now. Maybe you have a personal sin, maybe so, a way you've sinned against, maybe you've been living your life as an immoral, in an immoral way. Sorry. It, no matter what it is, or maybe it's sin, there are different types of sin. Maybe it's doubt, it's unbelief, you have been doubting Him. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to cleanse you. Ask Him to hold you. born again, you've not even given your life to Christ, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, and you have been living a life of sin, and today you say, Lord, I want to stop this life, I want to surrender my life to you, raise your hand, I want to pray with you, because everything we are talking about will not benefit you, if you are living in sin, you want to submit your life to Jesus, raise your hand, I want to pray with you, raise it above your head, far above your head, like this, I want to pray with you. Want to make him your Lord, want to make him your Savior. Or maybe you've been backsliding, you are born again, but you are backsliding and you've been living in sin. And you want to surrender your life and friend to Jesus. Raise up your hands. I want to pray with you. Is there anybody? If you're raising your hand, just wave it like this. I want to be sure so that I know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm not seeing hands. So let's move on. Wherever you are, just begin to... Okay, there's a hand. Come, come. If you're raising your hand, please come. Yes, okay, I can see that hand. Now, come. Please come. Come. Very important. 
very important. Please come. You want to surrender your life to Jesus totally. You want to make him your Lord and Savior. Please come. Come to me at the altar. Wherever you are, just come. Just come. Just come. I am your
new love. Or maybe you have metal fixing, maybe holding your joints together. And you are tired of that. Place your hand there. Or you have something artificial, you want to change to normal. Maybe you have an artificial heat, you can receive a normal heat.
know that God has touched you today. Can you put your hands together to the Lord? Can you give him some praise in the house? I 
that game the third day and I was so I almost everything was just black. I didn't know what I was saying to them. I feel like fainted. But immediately we just watched him and I knelt down and I just take my hands on my tummy and that's it like I'm free. I'm not gonna be like this thing like oh no.
I receive my blessing. I receive my breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Just come to the altar and drop it. And can you put up the, put up the account number? You can do it electronically. Put up the account number.